All right, let's talk about all the turmoil in the West Wing with Anthony Scaramucci. He was the White House communications director for 10 days, replaced by Hope Hicks, but knows very well what the dynamic, what Hope Hicks meant to President Trump. How big is this? It's 11 days. All right, yeah, let's start. 11 right, days. Let's start Fake news. Right, finally, finally with 11 days. 11 okay. days, but you were relevant before that period. You're relevant after it. You know the man. Oh, look, you I know worked, the vibe. How big is this? I worked on the campaign a long time. Right. And I was also the, on the executive uh, transition team. You know, the Absolutely. Committee. So, I remember it well. How big is this? So, well, I think it's a big departure in the sense that this is one of the president's closest uh, friends, aides, uh, loyalists, somebody that... Uh, understands the heartbeat of the president, understands his uh, personality, and also is, you know, she's incredibly good at guiding people. Uh, and I will tell you this about Hope. I don't, I mean, and Washington's a rough place. We both know that. I, there's not a malicious bone in Hope's body. I mean, she's just a wonderful person, always trying to do the right thing, cares about everybody, not interested in the conflict, not interested in the ego rub and the international bashing that uh, I experienced or other people have experienced. Now, on the plus side, so people... It's a big uh, loss for the president. People close to the president say the untold value of Hope Hicks wasn't about communications. It was about external communications. It was internal. Her ability to say to people, do not come at the president this way on this. He's angry about this. He doesn't want to be told about that. So and that true. that was very valuable for people trying to negotiate his mood around him. I think some of that's probably true. But here's the other thing is that, like, I think people always felt that she was very fair and very honest. So if you went to her with something and you said, OK, what do you think of this? She would give you a very honest interpretation. It was none of that uh, political nonsense or trying to, you know, sense the tea leaves of the situation. So so I have an enormous amount of respect for her. She's going to have a phenomenal career. Uh, you know, uh, my my agent called me last night. He's like, you got to help me get hope as a client. You know, that sort of thing. I mean, right. she's going to she's gonna do anything well, no, she I'm, wants. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, all of you guys will find avenues to success yeah. after being part of this situation. But on the negative side, it's, well, she says that she did tell some lies for the president. She said that there was no communications between anyone from Trump and Russians. She uh, you know, underplayed the situation with that meeting and the drafting of the response there, too. The Rob Porter thing was a okay, debacle so of epic proportions. So let's, un let's unpack each one of those things. Okay, so But let's start with the white lies. So I would submit to your viewers or anybody in America or around the world, tell me the person that hasn't told a white lie. I'll identify that person as the biggest liar in the room. And so uh, here's what happens in Washington that I absolutely can't stand. She's in a closed-door session they're asking your stuff. It's under oath. You know how important that is. So do I. The integrity of every sentence, every syllable. They ask her if she told any white lies. She said yes, probably. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. And then they pick up the phone, Andrew, I mean, sorry, Chris, and they drop a dime on her. Okay, it's just totally unfair. It's a closed session and in strict confidence. And so now they're trying to colorize this woman who's an extremely gifted professional as a liar. And so I submit it back to everybody else. Hold a mirror to your face. And tell me that you haven't told a white lie because I don't believe it. Okay. Well, fine, so, but in so her let's capacity, go to the next, right, let's go to no, the next position. But qualifying your critique of that is the idea that she said so, nobody on this team met with any so, Russians. We know that's untrue, and she should have known it was untrue when she said it. Okay. Well, I I don't know. I don't the, count that okay, as a white lie. Okay. So I don't know the exact facts of that that situation, whether she knew it or she didn't know it. So I can't really address that. What I can address is her integrity. She what said I can it to the Times two days after the election. She I, knew. I, I got it. And, 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 Ma and Maggie's here. And Maggie will be able to address right. that. She'll be able to tell you, call a ball and strike on that. What I can do, though, is I can step back after working with her for two and a half years and a pretty good evaluator of talent. Now, sometimes I am colorful about my evaluation of these people, but I've been mostly right about these people. You just take a look at what's gone on. And you so, think she was one of the good ones. I get it. Great, great. High integrity, well, very good person. what about the Rob Porter situation? She should have known. Uh, if Porter I'm involved situation. with this guy, I can't be involved with the white. I hold the White House chief of staff accountable for that. Kelly, you hold no, accountable. No question, because he had the information related to Porter, and I, I don't understand why he would allow hope to date Porter if he's got that information. How can okay? she keep him from dating? No, no, my point dating. is, come on. Not he, had, he had the information. He, he tried to cover up the information. He tried to get other people inside the White House to cover up the information for him. You believe Kelly okay. covered up the information about the... I do. Because that's not what the White House says. The White House says as that's soon as he found it. out, he acted on it. Right. Well, I don't believe that. Is that another white lie? Uh, I, well, you got to ask him. Have him sit in the white chair and have, ask him if it's a white lie or not. You'll be able to figure it out quickly.
But, you know, the, the Rob Porter situation for me, I like Rob. You know, uh, I, I've been asked even by the president that I that I see any of that indication of Rob. I didn't. Um, but there was an FBI dossier on Rob and people knew about it. And so, you know, look, I mean, I, I look. So know, how does me, Kelly I survive think, then? I, I, why was he allowed? Be, why didn't he get the this berating is, this that how, Hope Hicks got? This is how it works. OK, it's going to be up for the president to decide that. OK. Um, he, you know, it, you know, I guess he's an honorable Marine, and so he's got to look at himself in the mirror and say what he knew and what he knew it. But I'll tell you what I don't like about it, okay? I talked a little bit of smack about two guys that we were trying to get rid of. He fires me in five seconds. These guys are smacking up their wives, and he's trying to figure out a way to keep them inside the, the White House. So it's, it's very dishonest to me. So that's is it, perso my, is it a my personal opinion. grievance that's motivating you, or actually, you think as a matter of honor a cultural, and duty, Kelly needs to go? It's a cultural grievance, because I've sat in this white chair with you over the six months after he fired me and said nothing but good things about him. I have no problem with him firing me. Um, everybody has an opportunity and the right to change their staff, particularly when they're the chief of staff. But this is a cultural thing, okay? The morale inside the White House. You're a great reporter. You, you've got great reporters on staff here. The morale's terrible. And the reason why the morale's terrible is that the rule by fear and intimidation does not work in a civilian environment. And so here we are. Uh, it's, it's messed up. It'll be up to the president to figure out if he wants to fix it or not. If he doesn't, well, the question it'll, is it'll, it'll whether or not the like president this, is, I predict, is I predict, contributing to the turmoil. But I, I the predict office. more departures. You predict be, more departures. Be more departures. So you are subscribing to something that's bubbling up here. And I, I want to hear Maggie's take on this yeah. uh, as well. There is an Ides of March theory going on right now. You know, obviously we're in March, Ides of March. We all know what that means, right? Beware the Ides of March. That's when Caesar got taken out. But it's about trouble in the middle of the month. That's what the Ides uh, were. Do you believe that that's what we're looking at here, that there's going to be more trouble? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. But here's what I know is that when you're running an organization, particularly a civilian organization, there has to be a esprit de corps that's very different from the military and the ordinance structure of the military. And so uh, to me, I look at the morale. I see the departures. I see the departures of Trump loyalists and people that are close to the president. I see the fact that uh, uh, John has denied access to the White House of the president's strongest lo loyalists, myself included. I get invited to go to the White House. He's got me blocked on the wave system. You know, what I, does that I, mean, I, bad I morale? Think, because, by I the think, way, I think, it, I, think it's, I think it's a mistake going into a midterm election and into another presidential election where you've got Trump loyalists that want to help the president. I could care less that I got fired, okay? I'm not going to move off of my friendship with the president or my support of the president's agenda. But now, what are you going to do? You're going to block me from getting If someone wants right. to see me inside the White House, you're going to block me. When you talk about morale, what, is, what does that mean? What do you think is going morale, on? Morale, uh, there's a fear, culture of fear, culture of intimidation, people afraid to talk to each other. Coming Everyone's from trying. the president? They're afraid of the president? No, I think it's the chief of staff. I think there's a, there's a culture of fear inside the White House, and people are afraid to talk to each other. Uh, there's a, there's because a, Kelly's supposed you, to bring order. It's supposed to be a calming influence. You say no. Well, when you say order, is, uh, there's a martial order. There's a martial order. And then there's order where there's, like, uh, good harmony. Okay, there's two different types of order. There's a lot of different ways you can describe order. Uh, but sometimes order uh, is actually not a good word. Do you think that Kushner and Kelly can exist in the same White House for long? I, I hope so. Okay, because uh, Jared is a very valuable contributor to that White House. Uh, he had a broad portfolio. He's, uh, he's a very smart guy. You know, I have an enormous amount of respect for him. And by the way, here's the other thing. He's worked on this campaign slash transition slash presidency for a very long period of time. He knows the president very well. I, obviously, he's a family member. We don't have to state that, but I'll state it. But uh, he's a very good guy. And so... Uh, the notion of knocking him down a peg and then the way they're, they're treating him in the press, you know, I, I don't like it. Well, Kelly's the one who knocked him down a peg. He's the one who pulled the clearance. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, okay? My, my impression You don't though, think they should have pulled his clearance? I don't know, but my, my impression is uh, from having talking to people very close to Jared that he believes that he has the ability to get that clearance. But uh, uh, I think there needs to be an examination as, as to why Anthony, he's not getting it. would you take that meeting with Apollo Capital? If on the outside so, you were working a so, deal for a loan of that kind so, of money? So I'm going to answer it in two ways, okay? I, I probably wouldn't have taken the meeting, um, but I understand why Jared took the meeting. And let me just explain. Here's the problem now for business people that go into the White House. The system is set up really to block business people. I had to sell my company to get the OPL job, okay, a $228 million company. 
which has now been tied up in CFIUS for 15 months, okay? So that's CFIUS the CFIUS is the vetting uh, yeah, exactly. administration so I, that looks I, at those kinds I of deals. I sold it to a large right. cap global right. company, happens to be based in China. So now I have to wait 15 months for regulatory approval or disapproval, okay? Right. Never asked for a favor. I just wanted the process to start. Uh, but as it relates to being a business person, uh, Jared had probably loans outstanding from those companies prior to his arrival inside the White House. And so now you're in a very tough spot because of the way the rules and ethics are, are, are made. They're literally designed, Chris, to block entrepreneurs and business leaders from entering the system. Lawyers, academics, people that don't have strong intertwined business ties, it's a very different situation. Right, but for one, them. you know that you there's... A, you, a military general right, or but you know there's good reason for that. or any business interest. The good reason for that, Anthony, is exactly what we're seeing. 184, look, you know Apollo Capital very well. That is an unusual bridge loan, $184 million that they put out. The guy wanted to work, by, by the reporting on their own portfolio, okay. um, it's, that's an unusual one. It's a healthy one. The guy had interest in working in the administration. You come and you meet in your capacity as a representative of the United States government, and then you allow that to happen, Citicorp. Same deal, you allow that to when happen? You, when, you, when you analyze these things away and you characterize them the way you just did, okay, um, I, I understand the point that you're Semblance making. Semblance of under, impropriety I, is the I, standard I, for I, under, I understand the point that you're making and I understand the issues around conflict. But I'm saying something that's way broader than even Jared Kushner well, or tons Apollo. of business people work in there it, before. It, it, you can put not, your shares in things. You can who. divest. You can do different things if you who. want to serve the public. It's very, it's very, it's, Chris, Paulson. Very when he came in and it took okay, us well, through Paul, the okay, entire well, well, depression. Okay, well, hold on a second. Paulson's in a, in a publicly traded company. Right. Uh, very liquid, very deep liquidity in that stock. And you can let go of that thing without, quote unquote, Ziffy's approval, uh, none of the other nonsense. Uh, Jared and his family are Gary tied Cohn? into Goldman Sachs. Very deep, uh, very deep liquid stock. Trump? Le le well, he's he's on a different standard. Yeah, and he he's hasn't above, been transparent at all you. about it. If the rest he's of you guys acted you, the way the above, president did, you would have never been given your hold permission. On a second, but he's had a different standard. Look at the, what the law is. Okay, he is the one exception in that whole system. He could literally run the Trump organization right. and the Oval Office at the same time and be above the ethical fray. So no, he so, wouldn't be above the ethical fray. He'd no, be above no, he the would, legal fray. Okay, oh, okay, he wouldn't be above your ethical fray. But at the end of the day, you think it's you allowable. want a president running a private business? I well, the American people had had to decide that, right? They voted him in. They did he recognize said he would have nothing to do with his private has, business anymore. He really has. not Come on, come on. How can you say that? Well, he spends that? most of his How time you, at are Trump you hanging, properties. Are you hanging out with him? Huh? He spends most of his time at Trump properties because he owns the properties. Like going to your own but vacation. But I'm saying home. He, he's are look. You, the idea that he has nothing to do with his brand. All of this is an extension of brand for him. Oh, come on, you okay, know that. Andy. Okay, okay. No, you know that because of the way you're insinuating it. Okay, I know the kids very well. Won't show well. his taxes. He won't know, open any of his books of any of his transactions. Look, he looked at the situation with Governor Romney. When Governor Romney showed his taxes, uh, uh, poor Mitt Romney had a small Cayman Islands account. He built his career made himself unbelievably financially independent, and they railed on him for his uh, Cayman Islands account. And then they started these negative campaign advertisements about that he gave a woman cancer in the middle of Michigan. So, so this is what happens in our, our society. This happens in our politics. You can dislike the president, but he's a very good campaign strategist. The decision not to put out his very complicated tax structure yeah. and system uh, was probably a good one because it took off the table all of that negative activity. Yeah, but and what about American, truth American and transparency people, to people? You think we're I'm, too dumb I'm, to figure I'm, out his taxes? Uh, you, we, you got his taxes? No. Okay. I, if I, I had them, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Okay. I would have had a bunch of experts okay, go over it and here, outline here, any issues. Here, here, here we go again. Okay, you're, you know, the, the people voted. They, they, they looked at the president. They didn't have full information. Warts and all, uh, but they did. They had full information. And now we're steeping an investigation. Chris, Chris let me largely finish. largely is they looking had full, at exactly the they things they don't know about. They had full information that they didn't have full information. Okay. They had full, they had full information that, that they, they didn't, didn't have, have full information. information. That's exactly right. No, I don't think that's the way it works. I, I don't think, think people voted saying, people like, okay, I know I don't minute. know the truth about this minute. guy, for but I'll vote for 40 years, people divulged your taxes. 40 years prior, they didn't. This candidate made a decision not to. Am I going to vote for him, yes or no? Oh, I'm going to vote for him. He's the 45th But president. it's just not fair to assume that they... You can't know what you don't you, know, Anthony. So when you're missing when they, my point, you're missing my friends. point. They knew that they didn't know that. And if that's a red letter item for them, then they didn't vote for him. Right. It's just but an they, unfair if they standard. Willing, if, they were willing to, if they were willing to overlook that and take the entire package 
American people want reform, Chris. They don't like the I know, swamp. but they're getting more of the okay. same and worse. He was supposed to drain the swamp. He well, was supposed well, to bring well, in the best. Well, and look at what we're be, dealing with, how he sweats not. talent, how maybe, many just comms directors maybe, he's maybe, gone through. Maybe, maybe it's not drainable. Well, the maybe ethical it's a, problems. Maybe, maybe it's a gold-plated hot tub. Maybe it's not drainable. Okay, we'll have to figure that out. But the system the way it is right now, mm -hmm. American people don't like it. Okay, and so the reason why he's going to win re-election is mm -hmm. that uh, he represents a change and a possible disruption to that system. And maybe that system can't be disrupted, okay, because we've evacuated most of the Trump loyalists out of the White House. Uh, we don't allow access to most of the Trump loyalists to come into the White House. And so maybe the system itself is so powerful. Maybe the immunological system around the swamp is so powerful that uh, it will reject a disruptive move to change the system and make the system fairer and more accountable to the American yeah, Or maybe we'll adding a virus into that system. We'll have to see. W wasn't the change, uh, appropriate change mechanism. Maybe he'll have to try something else. But last word on yeah. this. You do believe- Economy's doing well. He's done a good job the, on, the, the, on the economic w policies. Wall Street's doing well. Time will tell how Street. the policies the wages, are, the wages are up, brother. There, there's, there are, are some indications of it. We'll see what I got, happens you know, in the reports. Despite Everybody wants my 11-day short stint, okay, I was trained in economy. I know you at, were. You look at the real wages, the real wages, the data rep represents real economic activity for the average American person. I just want to end on this word. You do believe that we should be open to more people leaving the administration. If the current situation and the current culture inside the administration stays exactly the way it is, right. there's literally no change, there will be a lot more departures. Yeah, the morale is at an all-time low, and it's trending lower.